I was saying, Mike, you got soaking wet when you came in. That was great. Great. Just great. You had a huge umbrella, though. Why are you so wet? No, it's it's, it's more of um, the knee down. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wet shoes, wet socks. Yeah. That was my big concern. Oh, yeah. Considering that, for me, this is laundry day. Oh, you ran out of clothes. Yeah, no, I've run out of socks. Oh, no. Yeah, that's my last pair of socks. Ah. So I have to go to Countdown and get some $2 coins out so I can do more washing today. Okay. Which is fine. I don't actually have to cook tea tonight, which is great. Which is? Well, what's he having for dinner tonight? Anyway? I don't know. I don't know. Apparently no one's cooking it. Well, well, You're not cooking it. So. I'm not cooking it. Because it's Tuesday night. And that means? It's, we, we have a collective food night. Oh, really? Yes. Aren't you going to contribute? I contributed two weeks ago. Oh. Yes. Nice. So so we have upgraded from three to four people. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Two, I, two Irish ladies and a Middle Eastern person. Can I tell you a dark joke? And two, I, two, I, two Irish, uh, Middle Eastern and a Maori walk into a bar. No, 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 no. no. no, no, no. <laughs> How many potatoes does it take to kill an Irish person? Uh, none. Yes. Classic. We all know that one. Yes. We all know that one, Sophie. Yeah. Well done. Two claps for Sophie. <laughs> Why did you take your glasses off? Well, I don't need them, do I? No. Not really. Uh, your eyes look different. Apparently this was more bloodshot this morning. Yeah, it's better now. Yeah. Does it does it have a yellowish tinge? No, not anymore either. Yeah. Which is great because um, they do that to um, check for something else. Oh, yes. So it's like a, uh, a local. An iodine solution? Eh? Hey? Iod- iodine solution? Kind of, yeah. So yeah, just to just to numb the eye while they check everything. And um, they're a bit worried about the cataract, but um, it's stable. Oh, that's good. Anyway, so rain protection gear. Yes. I guess we're conflicted about that. I suppose as a conflicting host. Um. It. Um. Yeah. Is this it, is as the undecided podcast? By the way, we're no, we're not quite decided on what is the best protection for the rain. Yes, with your host mics and mics and Sophie's. Yes. Um. Yeah. Um. It's for me. It's it's very dependent on the weather conditions. Okay. Um, I I know with relevant technology this is getting better. Yes. Um, but in saying that, um, I I would always go for wear as little as possible. Yeah. Bring a change of clothes and a tail, mm. and we uh, use an umbrella. And remember, if you're about to hitchhike, always remember your towel. Yes. You did not get that reference, did you? No. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Never mind. Yeah, so, um, you know, people wear um, rain gear, um, spray with some sort of all-weather sealant. Yep. Um, and, and all that sort of jazz. And I just think, you know... All you want to do is just get in and get out. Yes. So, do you prefer an umbrella over a raincoat because of your heat? Um, and it's purely based on what you're doing. In, yes. In the, in the weather conditions. If you're doing more physical work... Yeah. Raincoat is always the, rain, the way to go. Right. But if you are just walking with no rain, or with no, with no wind... Yes. Umbrella's the way to go. Okay, so how much would you spend on an umbrella? Well, because of the pretentious one of us hosts... Yes. Um, ...bullying me into her needs and wants um, thrusted upon me... Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, Sophie. Uh. More than likely, I'm going to get a purple blunt umbrella. No. No. They don't exist. They don't exist. <laughs> why not? Why they, Why do they make a purple umbrella, Sophie? They don't make purple umbrellas. The Blunt Company does not make purple umbrellas. Why not, Sophie? I have no idea. 
was either do they do, yeah we'll, we'll, we will look at color schemes after the podcast yes but because of my favorite colors are gray and purple yeah that would be my first pick okay do you like bonds umbrellas it's almost as if you're giving me ideas for your birthday. No, 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 no. I mean this seriously, you know, not because of the podcast, but if we were just talking right now, no. Right? No, no, no. What? No. You said, you said that you've already brought my birthday present. Is that, is that true? I have not bought her. I only have an idea for it. Damn it. And it's not get an umbrella. You're not asking to get an umbrella. I can't raise the money for it. I know. I know. Then why say it? (laughs) Christmas. Thinking about Christmas. You said you said Christmas. Is you asked me this question two weeks ago. You even asked me what do you want for Christmas? (laughs) Thinking that you had already brought my birthday present. I mean it's (laughs) <laughs> your your birthday present is an online thing, so I want to buy it closer to the time. Yeah, of course. So. Yeah. So I'm like... I already sorted it out. Yeah. Of sorts. Yes. But in saying that, because of what happened in the past... Yes. What happened at quiz night last week? We lost... Me and... Okay. Okay, so we had four people for a while, so Ray came along to... Return a book he borrowed. Yeah. Ernestine brought a friend called Elizabeth. Oh, yes. And halfway through, Ray left, Elizabeth left. It was just me and Ernestine for half of it. And we lost. Was it last place? Was it by much? No, about, about five points or so. Now, what, now because... From the second to last. So we usually try to aim for second to last because that means $30 bar tab. Yes. Um, what was the number? 50-something. Thing is, there was a lot of sporting questions, too. Oh, great. You, you were supposed to be there, but, you know, things happen. I know, I know. Uh, 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 and my goal is for that magical, stupid figure. What? 69. That is always my magical number. Magical number, 69. Yeah. Eat your heart out, Mike. It will never happen. I know, I, 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 I know but, like, like, it's around about the average of what we get. Six, but still though, why 69? Why not? Why not? Why not? Eat your heart out, come on. It yeah. doesn't ever happen. What's well, happened to us once? What? We got yeah! 69. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got 69 once and I just went, ha! Ah! <laughs> uh, do you want to hear a funny joke about that? Okay, fine. Tell me. Tell me jokes. Okay. Uh, the position known as 69 will be known as 96. Due to the crashing economy, the price of eating has gone up. <laughs> Fair call. Yes. Fair call. I like that joke. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Well done. Two claps for Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> so you never thought your life would be this way. Mm. Your job's a joke, you broke your love like COA. Never no, mind. No. N- n- never mind. This has been trademarked by... Whatever company that owns that program. Friends. Yeah. And family. Yeah. And I know there's friend of me's. So, considering that um, our, our school semester starts in the recording of this podcast in two weeks. Yes. My semester starts in two weeks. I'm not sure about you. It'll be in two weeks too. Oh, do you have Monday off? Yeah, I do. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Monday's off, yeah. Yeah. So, how is your timetable looking? Looks pretty sweet. How about yours? Um, it has changed. It oh, has changed. You have to send me something. Yes. Um, I originally only had class two days. Yes. Now it's three. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, well one of the, um, Thursday's classes got dropped back. Oh. To Wednesday. Which is fine. There was probably a clash. More than likely. Um, Clash of the Titans? Mm, yes. 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 Bad movie. Good original. Bad remake. Ooh. Bad remake. Hey, um, Mike, by the way, how come when a beautiful person gets murdered in a thriller, everyone makes such a huge fuss about it, and what happens if an ugly person get, gets killed in a thriller? <laughs> Does, hey, 
I just found something perfect. And if you want to be the perfect serial murderer, or you kill ugly people. That's why no one will care and no one will investigate. Wow. Wow. Yeah? That sort of um, survival of the fittest, right? <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or survival of the, t- of the tinderest. <laughs> survival of the most sexually attractive. Yeah. Yeah. Swipe left of the people. Oh, wait. Who... Sexual selection. It's literally sexual selection. Yeah. yeah. Swipe left to kill. Yeah. Swipe left to kill. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Dan Brown's particularly eg- egregious in that regard because it's like, you don't really matter unless you're beautiful. Yeah. I, and, and I would agree with that. Hey, um, Kay, do you mind doing a, I just remembered something. I do have some Dan Brown books in my library. Can you please do like an interval thing? Yes. Now, it, well, if you uh, remember, this podcast has been sponsored by this 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 podcast is sponsored by paperback books. Paperback books should be made from recycled paper. This podcast is brought to you by the letter B. The letter B. It is the second letter of the alphabet. This podcast is brought to you by the movie. Angels and Demons. Angels. Film. We don't want to be sponsored by that. I know. Anyway, um, so I got a couple of Dan Brown books. The only reason why I have them was because I did not buy them. Uh, they were left out in the rubbish one day. Now, considering that, um, I did have the first four Dan Brown books. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so this is from the blurb of the the, the, the Da Vinci Code. Elderly curator, da 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 uh, Gift of French cryptologist. I mean, I guess she wasn't that beautiful, I suppose. Uh, Halvard Renown Professor. Oh, Langdon joined forces of Victoria Bertra, a beautiful and mysterious Italian scientist. One. <coughs> Deception points, Dan Brown. Yes, so, so if you remember the Dan Brown, the, yes. the first four books were... Rachel Sexton, okay, she wasn't described as beautiful, that's interesting. Miracle Stain. Dan Brown only picks beautiful people. Yeah. Dan Brown only picks beautiful people, and um, if you're not beautiful, you don't matter. So let me, okay, how about this one? Susan Fletcher and Digital Fortress by Dan Brown, a brilliant, beautiful mathematician. <coughs> Is that me? No. Okay. Angels and demons. Uh, I, I I would think potential potential autistic Chinese lady. Potentially autistic Chinese lady. <laughs> yeah. Who's been cu- is who's been called cute more than a few times. In in a pretentious suburbs. Ah, uh, by various colleagues. Yeah, but. Well, were, were they in pretentious, pretentious suburbs? Yeah, uh, St. Catholic's girls, would you call them pretentious? Yeah, of course I would. Yeah, pret- uh, yeah well, St. Catholic's girls, they think I'm cute for some other reason. I look cute. Yeah, yeah. Never quite beautiful, but adorable. Yes, but in saying that... Yes? Because we had an interesting debate in the chat. Yeah? In, in regards to the, the hierarchy of of how the schooling system works at Auckland. Yes. Because, like we talked about St. Cuthbert's. Yeah. St. Mary's. Oh, yes. Yes. I, I ended up walking up that hill yesterday. Yeah. And, um, Baradine. Baradine is considered a little bit less pretentious than St. Cuthbert's because some girls there are in because they happen to be in zone. Yes. Whereas St. Cuthbert's girls, they'll... None of them are are considered in zone. You have to A, pass the interview, and and B, pay up some money. Yes. So, some of the girls from Baradine are not there because they paid money. Therefore, they're considered less, that school's considered less pretentious. Now, in saying that, Yes. What do you think is the most pretentious school in Auckland? Dawson. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, the thing is, uh, they're more classist. More posh. Does it come with a tertiary education? Probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so good, but at least um, if you're poor, if you have good academics, no one really cares. Whereas Dalsison, people literally just go to Dalsison just to say they went to Dalsison. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, th- this is completely 
out of out of the park for me. Yes. Because I went from a DSL one school to a DSL five. Yeah. And I thought that was a big jump. Yeah. And then you're talking about private skills. Which are like, like DOS, DSL, Infinity. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, great. It's a whole new different world. I mean, I went, I went from public schools such as um, Remember Intermediates and Cool Park. Then I went, jumped over to St. Catherine's. Oh my God, it's another world in on itself. Yeah. I have to admit. It's another world. Yeah. And not a world in which everyone should be in because, not because it's, you're not pretentious enough, but because it's a pressure cooker environment that's not conducive to everyone. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, you know you're talking, in, in my case, it was a jump from under 200. Yes. To just under 1,000. Yeah. And then, you know, you're talking about, you know, schools like Mount Albert Grammar and Raina Toto. Suddenly they're strangers. Yeah, like, like almost 3,000. Yeah. Which I can't even bother, boggle my mind around. Because, you know, I, I would think that is a huge health and safety risk. <laughs> have enough people, have enough fire exits, have enough space, I suppose it won't be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Uh, uh, but in saying that, for another further point... Come on, um, we need to go back to what happens to ugly people in thrillers. Yeah, but... In saying, have we just found the perfect one crime? One more point, one more point. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, one more point. I always thought that Rangatoto School was in Rangatoto Island. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that too much until I realised I was actually uninhabited. I'm thinking, oh, okay, I need to change my point. Yeah. Change my point. Anyway, so what happens to ugly people in thrillers? They die. Or, or, or they are the murderer. Or they get ignored. Yeah. So, have you just found the perfect crime? Just murder ugly people in thrillers? Well, well, that, that means that technically... Yeah? I'll be safe, wouldn't I? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an ugly person, so I'm great. No, you get killed. No. No, I'll survive. Why's that? Because I'm too ugly. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Yeah, I'm, I, I am too ugly. Yeah. And, and, and you and you will survive. Yeah. I actually know. No. Depend, depends on the murderer. You either will not die or you'll die first. I'll die first, and I'll be the one that kickstarts the plot. Yeah, because you, you'll be the token death. Yeah. Yeah. The token beautiful death that somehow everyone cares about. Oh, uh, uh, it was more a racist remark. I know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah. And when a beautiful, autistic, gifted Chinese <laughs> was killed, or Chinese lawyer was killed, everyone was in huge hubbub, hubbub because, like, oh my God, people like her shouldn't, be, shouldn't die. She's too beautiful. <laughs> And, the, and this is how Sophie gets to sleep at night. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's probably a little bit too much pride there. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, though, it's like, well, what would you think your role will be in the, in the thriller novel? Um, I think I'll be the token death at the very start. Yeah. I, I, I get to die. I would, well, if I were to die, yes. I would be the last death. Oh, yeah, like the fat's best friend. Yeah, like like like, yeah. like I knew who the killer was, but I got caught. Yeah, stuffed in the fridge. Yeah, so yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, or I would be the uh, the obscure person f at the start. Yes. Who ends up surviving at the end, oblivious to everything that happened. Yeah. I mean, honestly, those thrillers are not kind to people who are not beautiful and white, and you know, do not, does not fit the normal societal norms of beauty. Yes. I have to admit that it's just it's terrible. Like, you know... I'm dead, and you get no role. Yeah. Seriously, Dan Brown should actually up his game a bit in terms of diversity, I'll say that. Nah! <laughs> Not that's ever going to happen. Oh, we, we all need to. We all yeah. need to. But it's okay. Oh. Oh, well. Yeah. Should we also link a picture so that people actually understand why we, I'll die first in Dan Brown level and you get to survive? <laughs> No, 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 no. It's okay. Um, Just search us out on Facebook. We're putting enough pictures on there. Yeah, yeah. Look at our Twitter handles. Yeah. Apparently, you look like a dog. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. When a beautiful, rare and autistic dog. <laughs> rare and autistic dog. Dog. 
Okay. Okay, okay. When the beautiful Rhea uh, doll gets kidnapped by a stranger and is up to the pet detectives. <laughs> okay, this is actually getting ridiculous. Um, oh yeah, um, that reminds me of a podcast I was listening to the other day because there was a doll called Masterpiece that was um, kidnapped one day. Huh. And it was like the most famous poodle ever. Huh. That's hilarious. Yeah. Did they find it or is it still missing? That, the, the kidnapping happened about 70 years ago and still missing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, one, one can presume a lot of things. Like masterpieces dead. Yeah. Buried. Up in doggy heaven. Possibly. Over the rainbow bridge. Over the rainbow bridge. Over the pride bridge. Yeah. And considering that, the pride festival in, in Auckland was cancelled. This year, it was um, the pride parade was cancelled, yeah. Did you implement weather? Yes. Now, um, the New Zealand police, mm. so what they've been doing over the last few years is that they have been making token cars. Yep. And this is no exception. This week was no exception. I see. They made a pride car. Yeah. What is your take on token police cars? They should put them on a, on a more permanent basis, not just, you know, one parade. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, the, the best one I heard was from a pride organiser. Yeah. That said that the police will go out for gay for pride parade you know what uh two weeks of the year yeah and yet i'm pride 52 weeks of the year i mean surely there's a patrol car that's that's does kind a happy road on a regular basis that could be a pride car yeah exactly pride car. but it should yeah. be happy it sh- we should see that car on a more regular basis yeah you know outside of these events it should be a normal patrol patrol car yeah same with the Māori one. Oh yes, not just Māori language read. They just they should actually have it around in the Māori heavy areas. Yeah, yeah. E- e- either in um, rural Māori yeah. areas, mm. um, like, like for instance, if I were to pick the best place to stick it, probably be around Waitangi area. Waitangi, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can, you can put it. In hotspot areas, yep. say like Mutapara, if you know where that is, which I think you don't. No. Uh, but generally around uh, poor, poor parts of, poor isolated parts of New Zealand. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. I think that's what have Māori horses. I think they just have horses in those rural areas, right? Well, <laughs> there's a famous place between Koldo yeah. and Fakatani where I was born. Yeah. There's a place called Teka. Yeah. Um, and uh, on the on the off streets, they actually had hay bales as roundabouts. You mean you can actually like go into those hay bales, Assassin's Creed style? No, 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 no. no, no like, like you know, you know, tied up ha- hay bales. Oh come on! And, and you know, you would circle around the, ra- the roundabout of hay bales because. There's more people with horses than there is with cars. So you mean like you have the horses go up to the hay bales and start eating? Yeah. You can't jump into the hay bales? No. Aww. They're pretty hard. Those hay bales are pretty hard. Yeah. They're not like soft, normal hay. No. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Um, yeah. So the, that would be my thing. Like, for instance, I would think that that car would have been a white honey day. Oh, yeah. I would think that it should be there for um, Multi Language Week. Mm-hmm. Um, any other? Oh, Ratana, that's a big one. Um, in, in, in any sort of Kapahaka regionals, that'll be perfect time to bring that car. And it's Matariki. Yes. Yes. By the way, that's Multi New Year, which. <coughs> um, <coughs> Māori New Year happens during the middle of European, Georgian New Year. Um, no, Georgian, not Georgian New Year, Georgian Year. Matariki happens around about June, is it? Um, it's winter solstice. Yeah, winter solstice, June. Which means it's like right in the middle of the Georgian calendar. Which is actually quite nice because it's a great excuse for, say, like a winter Christmas. You may as well have like a Matariki yeah. for winter Christmas. Yeah, call it a non-de- non-denominational Matariki Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because it's found out that it's a really depressing time of the year in which you don't really get festivals. Yeah, and or, or in this country, yeah, days off. I know. There should be days off for that, for Matariki. Because you've got from June yeah. to October. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, there was another thing to actually have um, Sir Edmund Hillary's birthday as a national holiday. Possibly. Yeah, that's around, I think that was in July. Well, so, well, during this long drought of no holidays. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, they, they've done the costings for that. It's around about $650 million. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes when you work too hard, your productivity decreases, so... Yes, and saying that, um, what do you think about the possibility of a four-day work week? Not... I haven't really studied that. Yeah. Some companies are starting a four-day work week. So, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. No, no, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. I thought maybe if they did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday break, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday break. Mm. Yeah, um, Monday, Tuesday break, Thursday, Friday break. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's I'll definitely think that would, that would be better. Yeah. But in saying that, yeah. what do you think about that? Instead of a five, eight hour work week, it would be a four, ten hour work week. I seriously have no idea because I haven't studied it. Okay. You know, I can't really give opinion for things that I haven't really thought about. Initial thoughts, though. I need more data. Okay. Um, like some um, industrialized or even supply chain areas work on a four on four on four off basis. Ah oh, yes. Um, Frontier works on a four day four on four off basis. Uh, but you work 48 hours in that four hour stint. Wow. So four day stint. So you'll do uh, 12 hours, 12 hours, and then a 24 hour break, and then 12 hours, 12 hours, and then you have four days off. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. So 48 hours in four days. Wow. Yeah. Can you do that? Um, yeah, I could be conditioned to that. Uh, that sounds a bit too much for me at any given time. Yeah. I'm better off with um, short working hours, short break, short working hours, short break type thing. Like. Okay, so um, like um, a bus driver effect. Yeah, I'm better off as a bus driver sort of thing. Like, like you, you, you know, um, you would have work four hours, have four hours break, and then work four hours and that's your for day. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it'll be like eight and a half hours work in a 12, a 12 and a half hour shift. Yep. Yeah. And with that being said, shall we break off? Yes, we should break off. This has been the... As you have the side podcast with your conflicted hosts, Mike and Sophie. You can contact us on as yet undecided podcast at gmail.com. Or you can contact Mike on... The minus T H E M A A N U S or Sophie on Sophie nine seven zero nine. And if you wish to contact us on Twitter slash Tumblr slash Facebook, we are <laughs> at AYU Podcast at AYU Podcast slash 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 slash. <laughs> <laughs>